as promised on the last show, I said that we would do a lava cake. We would have a chocolate show. Well, Lisa and I are going to not only be doing a lava cake, we're going to throw in a chocolate bun cake and chocolate peanut butter truffles. So this is a chocolate treat show. The, uh, the first thing I want to show is the ingredients for the chocolate bun cake. And they include chocolate devil's food cake mix, chocolate pudding, instant chocolate pudding, chocolate chips, eggs, water, and vanilla. And as you can see here, this is the end result for the chocolate bundt cake. Lisa is going to be putting together all the dry ingredients, the powder and the pudding and the chocolate chips. You can begin and I'm going to start with the liquid ingredients. And then when I'm finished and she's finished, I'll add it to her mix. She'll combine it and put it into a grease bake pan. Just on the bottom, I'm just going to do the bottom a little bit, just to make sure the... See? See right there? Just do a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Struggling a little with those chocolate chips. Mm-hmm. Looks good. Okay, and now... Okay, you can get the uh, container. Empty container. Good. I know, and this is how easy it is. It's it's uh, it's just putting everything together in 350 degree oven, 50 to 55 minutes. You put a cake tester in. I let it rest for five minutes, five to ten minutes before I uh, invert it and put it on uh, a plate. But otherwise, it is so simple. Does the pudding mix make it more nice? Mm-hmm, absolutely. And you're fooled sometimes when you put the cake tester in because you think it's not done. But it's done at 50, 55 minutes. It's just that sometimes the uh, chocolate chips make it seem wet. And why don't you just set this aside and, and put that in the sink. And Set that aside and bring over a finished cake. So we'll show the uh, topping process. Mm -hmm. The topping for the bun cake consists of cocoa powder, confectioner sugar, butter, hot water, all blended together. So while Lisa is doing this, 
she's going to be adding the chocolate with a tablespoon on top of the cake and you'll notice by adding it on the top it drips down on both sides. If it doesn't she can always move it so that it will start to slide down both sides. And I'll help a little bit too. I'll show you by putting a spoonful on top sort of like a thick spoonful, it takes care of itself, see that? Right, right, right. And it hardens relatively quickly. If you notice, we have wax paper. I told Lisa to just cut a few pieces of wax paper and put it underneath the cake. And this way, less spillage, so that when we're through, we won't have too much to clean up. Presentation is nicer, and uh, you'll find that it works out much better. You don't have to use all of it. Once there's a little bit right there, I put a little bit there and is <laughs> one right here. This is a chocolate rich cake. So now what we can do is slide, you try sliding out your pieces and it should come out on the wax paper, most of it anyway. There. So you see the chocolate bun cake. And sometimes I put a little bit in the center, but you can also put whipped cream in the center and that can cover the, uh, the chocolate spillage. Another variation for making this bundt cake is to use a mini bundt pan. And it makes six little mini cakes. Again, spray the pans, do the very same thing, mixing the dry with the wet, putting it in here. You do this for less time, so you have to watch it. It's usually about 35, 40 minutes. And what you get are six beautiful little mini cakes. Adorable. They're great. <laughs> They're great to bring to someone for a treat, for a party, and here are some samples. If we were to have a party, we would take some white chocolate or some chocolate syrup, decorate the plate first, go in the garden, get some leaves, whether it's ferns, mint leaves, and this is what we came up with for dessert treats. Using the seasonal berries, like the raspberries and strawberries. Right, chocolate curls, whipped cream, and- if you're at a restaurant. Absolutely. The ingredients for the lava cake, very simple. Five ingredients. Chocolate squares, semi-sweet baking bars, butter, flour, eggs, and sugar. The ramekins, as we call them, have already been greased with butter. Lisa put those in with a piece of wax paper. Lisa, you're now going to take the melted chocolate bars and the butter and add the flour and then whisk it in just till it's combined. Okay? All right. And then I'm going to take the eggs and the sugar and beat them till they're light yellow and frothy.
You let me know when you're ready. Okay, now pour it in, add it to my mix. That's good enough. And just till combined, do a little bit with the blender on a one. Good. Okay, and I'll show you how we take one cup at a time and pour it halfway and into the tray. It's better to do it on another mat like we're doing it because you're not putting spillage into the bake pan and you won't get that burning smell on the bottom of the tray. Good. You can just take a little paper towel and wipe it around the edges. It will rise. 400 degrees for 20 to 22 minutes. I go close to the 22 minutes. Good. That one might need a little bit more, but if you have some extra, we'll see. And you might need to use the uh, spatula at the end if you have any extra. Beautiful. This one could use a little bit more. There we have it. Good. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Good. All set. Take her away. <laughs> they rise, and what you do is you wait until they rise almost like a little bit like a popover. They have a crustacean on top, and then the centers are supposed to be liquid want to uh, loosen up the uh, lava cake so that it will come out easily. So I usually, what I do is I take a knife and I go around the cake and then I tap it on the top. And again, you wait five to 10 minutes in order to do this. And I use a glove. This glove is the best. It's an insulated glove. You get it at a hardware store so that you can take, hold it like so because it's still hot and then hopefully you will get it and sometimes I take a mallet, not too hard, and ta-da! You have your <laughs> lava cake. So that's, you have to be very careful how you take it out. Well, some and, of the lava cakes are baking. I just want to show you folks how when a lava cake comes out and you cut it open, it oozes out with the chocolate that is left inside. Now sometimes there is a center hole that you know you feel maybe is not that attractive. So you can take and you can just fill it with whipped cream and just pop either a strawberry or a raspberry anywhere on top or on the side, and it gives it some pizzazz. Now what I would like right now is to have Lisa and I, and I do have some ice cream in the freezer. If you could just get that, 
we have um, some ice cream to show you because some lava cakes are presented with ice cream, others with whipped cream. And we have raspberries, confection of sugar, strawberries, and mint leaves. So you can just peel those off. And we're just going to play with a few of these dishes in front of us and show you how you too can create a beautiful designer dessert. I have taken chocolate and zigzagged it on plates or chocolate syrup to give it more of a wet look. And so let's begin. Right on top. Right on top. <laughs> no, that's fine. You can take yours. I'd put a mint leaf even on top. And also, I have a little cup in the freezer of little chocolate pieces mm -hmm. after I make my chocolate rolls. So why don't you dip in and get some chocolate? That would be nice too, because on this one, I have little pieces of on the top. It's right there. Thank you. I have little pieces of chocolate scattered, and I think that would be nice too. Good. And I like to put flecks of it on whipped cream. So you can decide where you want to put yours. And I'll just add a little bit here. So here's my, <laughs> my contribution to the chocolate lava desserts. And I'll add, if you have, do you have another ice cream? Or are we all? Okay, so I'll leave that there. Thank you. That. I think I will add a nice strawberry to this one. And a few shreds. And there you have that. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> this, and we'll just add a little bit more. This needs a little mint leaf. Some green, right? Right. I think I'll put a little here. Add a little whipped cream. And for this one, I think I'll add a few more chocolate sprinkles on the plate. Wow. There. How's that? There you have it. It's, it's really a lot of fun. It's probably one of the sweetest, most desirable cakes in the restaurants today. I mean, everybody is asking for either tiramisu or lava cake. So there you have it, and I hope you try it. We're starting now with the chocolate peanut butter truffles. And here are the ingredients that you'll need. Confectioner sugar, graham cracker crumbs, chunky peanut butter, melted butter, chocolate chips, pinch of salt, and paraffin wax that's used for confections, candy making, and little cookies. And here is what the peanut butter truffles will ultimately look like. Some plain, some decoed with white chocolate. And also, one and a half packages of graham crackers makes the one and a half cups of graham cracker crumbs. Here we go with the uh, peanut butter truffles. We first have wax paper on the tray. Lisa, you can start adding the ingredients the uh, Lisa is adding the uh, chunky peanut butter first and 
Usually you can get one and a half cups out of that jar. It's a little bit more, I think, but it's still better not to save a spare anything. The confectioner's sugar is also one and a half cups. And the graham cracker crumbs, one and a half cups. And Lisa, just take with the uh, blender and just do it for a few minutes. That's good. Uh, just do it a few spins. And we'll add a stick of melted butter and a pinch of salt. Good. You can stop it. It's nice and crumb-like. And now it'll be nice and pasty. Okay. When that clumps together, what we'll do is we'll just take, roll little one inch balls and we're going to drop them in this pot of the chocolate chips mixed with the wax, two ounces of wax, and place it on the wax tray let it refrigerate for an hour and it comes out great. It's just a nice hard chocolate peanut butter ball. Beautiful. See how that comes out? Great. Yes. <laughs> Good. So I've given Lisa her choice of which kind of candy holder. We're going to drop the balls in and then we're going to try to Plop them out. Oops, excuse me. So take a few. Here, I'll just put it right there. Take a few pieces in your hand, roll them, make sure they come together, drop it in the chocolate, roll it around, and then very carefully pick it up and put it down on the wax tray. So you try that. Just roll it. See if it comes up with that prong. Beautiful, beautiful. Place it. Good. We'll just do a few more. And you can get a full tray. I find that I can freeze these I use them in holiday packages. And who doesn't like peanut butter and chocolate? <laughs> you can use smooth, uh, creamy peanut butter, but it'll come out a little flatter. It won't be as, uh, as sturdy as this peanut butter ball. So you can decide if you have people who cannot take the chunky peanut butter, you can certainly do it with the smooth and get the same taste, just a flatter effect. Beautiful. And while Lisa's doing that, I'll show you we have already a terrific tray completed. And if I can take a little piece and just cut it in half for you to see. And Lisa, you might want to have a little taste of it. But there you have it. Don't be concerned about the shape. And also, as we have here, I've taken and added white chocolate. You just put it in a little pastry bag and drizzle white chocolate over some of them for a candy effect. And there you have a terrific peanut butter truffle. So here, we've tried to give you three chocolate delights today. I hope you try at least one of them. The recipes are available at the end of the show. Please reference how you can get to them and try them. They are not difficult. Enjoy.